Hello and welcome to the second part of my Nitro Planes Projet Phantom video. I've been flying it a lot. I also know a lot about Phantom Jets, having spent 30 years in the Marine Corps aviation field. I began working on RF-4B photo recon Phantoms when they were first introduced and worked on them till they were phased out of the Marine Corps. I actually flew in them and know all of the quirks. And note, not many air shows with old planes feature Phantoms, because they also need special equipment to fly since they don't even self-start. Well, right out of my NATOPS flight manual, I present these facts and suggest that if you get the Nitroplanes ProJet F4, you incorporate the following options that are standard equipment on the real plane with good reason, because the ProJet flies just like the real Phantom. So let me explain. First of all, since they are very heavy, a flying elevator has been incorporated. It scoops some of the turbine thrust to help at low speeds and can make a high alpha approach. It's kind of like thrust vectoring. Second, it has flaps on the front of the wing, and they're called slats, that increase the airfoil even more than just the rear flaps. Third, it has BLC, that's Boundary Layer Control, and that means that when the leading edge slats are down for takeoff and landing, there are slots all along the leading edge that blow 1,000 mile an hour hot air over the top of the wing, thus also increasing lift that much more. The fourth thing that it has that the model doesn't is wheel brakes. Kind of important. And it has a drag chute because the wheel brakes and speed brakes aren't enough either. And it has a tail hook to grab the cable in case that all doesn't work. Okay, I love this plane and I hate it. The CG must be right on and I mean it. People who tell me they're not having problems with their elevator just don't recognize the problem as I do. And they're coming in darn hot. And if you tell me your plane weighs 9 pounds, I have a problem with that too. Mine has been repaired over and over and weighs only 7.5 pounds with the same equipment and 4 cell batteries as the others I've seen fly. So many of you wanted to see my Phantom fly again, and so I'm fulfilling my obligation and I hope you enjoy this. As I can tell you, I put in way more hours and time in this model than any other model I've ever had in 50 years. It is also very pretty and looks gorgeous in the sky. It can fly extremely fast, especially with those alloy fans, but the similarity ends there. Consider this, air is full size and the model is not. That said, all my ducted fan gas nitro planes also needed a cheater hole in the bottom. This was to allow more air in as the stock intakes were just not enough. This Phantom also needs almost full power to fly because if you slow it down, it drops just like a brick and that's just like the real one. So since none of those real options are present on this ProJet F4, I must say, even with all my experience, this jet is very hard to land due to the lack of flaps and an efficient elevator. You've got to come in hot. Remember, with no air blowing across the control surfaces like a prop job, the only way the controls work is for the plane to be flying fast, and that it does. I believe I've gone above and beyond the call of duty to work out the bugs on this plane for all of you who wanted to buy one, and you know you could save some steps from my experience, but at last, I'm now going to retire it while it's still in one piece and I can still enjoy the exhilaration of flying it in memory and in this video. Enjoy the show. Phantoms have to come in at a high alpha, and you can't do that when you're going slow and you haven't got this air blowing across your elevator. You just can't do that. So everybody's flying in like a crazy and bounce, bounce. You've got to come in like this to land on aircraft carrier. It doesn't come in 300 miles an hour. We're going to look at this right now on the video. So here's how it's done in real life. I took these Super 8 videos in 1976 and was also in the helicopter for the bow shots. Note the high alpha approach and takeoff. This is a Navy Phantom coming in. And well, this Phantom had to take the barricade because the left wheel fell off on takeoff. As I videoed this, I was amazed at how that Phantom ripped right through that barricade. But no one was hurt. Being in the avionics shop, it was great because I had a pretty good bird's eye view here. was able to get up on the flight deck a lot. And uh, 
Here's a, a shot of us taking off. I flew in 615. This is Major Spooner. Did you know that you have to push a switch in the nose gear to raise the nose about a foot and a half before you take off, increasing the angle of attack? Now here you can see a high angle of attack, high alpha, as uh, Major Spooner comes in and does some touch and goes on the midway as it was cleared right now. We were undergoing a speed test and he wanted to come around and do some touch and goes and stuff. So I asked the Navy pilots of the rescue helicopter if I could fly aboard their chopper while Major Spooner was undergoing these flight tests. And they said sure, so uh, they even hovered in front of the midway let me take these shots. Okay, so there you go. You can see how it actually flies in real life. Now, let's undergo some thrust testing that I've developed to see how much thrust is really uh, being generated by my F4. Okay, well this may not be very scientific, but it will give a relative indication. What I've got is the scale set up. As you can see, it's set up, it's at uh, zero right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up. No holes in the bottom of the fuselage. I'm doing this to find out the thrust. This airplane weighs exactly seven pounds. So here we go, full throttle. That's about two pounds. All right, let's put some holes in the bottom now, uh, some cheater holes, and see if we can increase the thrust in. These cheater holes will allow a less restricted airflow to the fans. Since air is always full size, we could not ever get enough air from the scale airplane stock intake, so all my gas ducted fan models had cheater holes to let in more air. Makes sense now, too. I think it's got way more power. Let's go fly it. Not having enough elevator to pull out of a split S turn, I had a major failure, thus the added single elevator servo that I installed, but it still didn't help. Well, it turns out there was a lot more damage from that mailbox hit than you'd think. But we can rebuild it. We can make it better. We have the technology. So now this is what it looks like and what happens when you don't have a flying elevator, slats, boundary layer control, speed brakes, regular wheel brakes, a drag chute, or an arresting hook. <laughs> what could go wrong? Shutting the motors off was a mistake because it just dropped like a rock and I couldn't recover. That was scary. I heard it. I heard it down here. Okay, let's try it again. Bigger cheater holes this time. Let's see how it does. You can hear I'm having an extremely hard time trimming this. This pass is almost full up.
that's moving. Wow. Okay, change the center of gravity a little bit. Let's try it again. I'm just going to go around once and see if I can land slow. Well, that was kind of rough with that crosswind, but it's back down again, folks. This airplane I have given as much attention to as any of my airplanes uh, to try to make it fly. So you've seen what I've put up with, and uh, it sure is pretty though, huh? See you later. <laughs> there you go.